Hello, here we are for the third part of the array, the linear two-dimensional array. Here is the body that I've created specially for this operation. I'll show you how to use the two-dimensional array to make a grid of holes in this piece to make a drill holder. So this is a body, it's 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters. It has a hole of 8 millimeters in diameter. So let's start by creating the job. I will select the body and go to the path workbench and click on the new job button. I will select the job from the templates and click on OK. Again OK because everything is already set up. And the first thing that I need to do is create a helix to make this hole. I don't use the drill operation because I use a GRBL CNC which doesn't recognize the G codes for drilling. Anyway I think the finish of the holes created with a helix is much better. So let's click on the helix button. Let's go to the base geometry. You can see here the hole selected. I will click apply and you can see it already created the path to drill this hole. I will click OK to close the helix operation details. Everything is as it should be. And after selecting the helix, I will click on the array button. And of course, the array is created without opening a dialog because it doesn't have an interface. You have to change everything from the data tab. First, I will go here and change the type to linear 2D. You can see I have different values of course, copies on the X, copies on the Y. Every operation that I've shown you until now there is a jitter, but I will explain what it does when we will make a random pattern on a board in the future episodes. I also have the offset on the X and on the Y. So let's start by changing the number of copies. Let's say I want to make 10 holes on the X and 10 holes on the Y axis, but all of them are in the same place because I don't have an offset on the X and on the Y. So let's say I want them 50 millimeters apart on the X and 20 millimeters on the Y. You can now see the array has already been created. Of course, there are no holes in the body because it's just an operation. It doesn't modify the actual body. One other method that I could have used was to use an array in the part design workbench and repeat this feature on the both axes. But Sometimes I think it's much faster to do it this way and if I only have to drill a board it's much easier than having to make so many holes and then adding all the geometry to the helix and calculating all the paths and so on. So let me just hide the body and you can see there are a lot of helixes one next to each other spaced apart at 20 millimeters. Actually it's not the space between the edges of the operation but the space between the centers of the operations. And I can also change the Z here. If I change the Z to 10 millimeters, you can see the change in the height of the operation. It's only modified on one axis on the X axis at first, but I have an option here to swap direction, which will modify this on the Y axis. I cannot combine the two of them. I just have to choose between the X axis, which will be made if false is selected. What could this be useful for? Let's say I have a stack of boards. I will offset each of them, let's say 20 millimeters to the back, I will stack them and if the board's height is 20 millimeters, I will make an offset on the Z of 20 millimeters and each end of each of the boards that are stacked here are going to be drilled in the ends. So this might be useful when I have a lot of similar items to drill in the ends or to cut in the ends, it doesn't matter. I can stack them, I can make a template for example for stacking them. After stacking them, I can repeat an operation and I will be able to make a lot of boards at once. So now there's a little trick that I want to show you about the array operation. It works also with one dimensional linear array, two dimensional array and also with polar array. So it works with any kind of array. Let me just modify the number of copies. I will just have four copies on each direction and let me change the Z to zero again and make an offset of 60 millimeters on each of the axes. And now I will go to the body move to the part design workbench, select this face and I will create a new sketch and next to this hole I will create an oval. I'll close the sketch and I will make a pocket using this sketch, using this shape, let's say of 10 millimeters deep. I will click OK and now go back to the job and to the path workbench. Of course the helix operation won't be able to mill this hole because it's not perfectly round. So I will have to create a pocket. I will select the bottom of the hole, create a pocket operation, set it to offset as usual, a 50% step over, click on apply and you can see the operation is here. So I actually want these two holes repeated all over this big board. Let's say I want to make a lot of similar pieces with these two holes, one next to each other and then I will cut the entire stock after drilling all the holes. So I will go to the array operation, click on the dots next to base 
and I will also select the pocket shape. So what's the most important thing here is that the array can have more than one operation after moving away from the array so it does recompute and I will hide the body. You can see that for each repetition in the array I have both operations which can be very useful in situations where I have different types of holes which cannot be milled using the same type of operation so I really have to make two operations or maybe if I had another round hole but with a smaller depth of course I had to create two helix operations because I cannot have holes with a different depth in a helix operation in just one operation and being able to make a single array with all these features simplifies a lot the tree and the work that I have to make to set up and so on. So this covers all the three types of array operations. They are very useful and in a future episode we will start to make really interesting things with the array operation like random patterns which can be very useful when designing furniture for drawer fronts for doors and so on. Thank you for watching and see you next time.